I'm Valentin. I work at Red Hat in the container engines team, and I help build and maintain a couple of core libraries and also the, the container tools uh, like Potman, Builder, Cryo, and Scopio. And I'll pretty much most of my talks with exactly this one. And I don't want this talk to be just explain on our philosophy. So our philosophy do not want to provide size fits all solution. On the left hand side you actually see this analogy of army knives and the one you see on is one you can actually buy. Um, it's awesome. It's all features um, that you can only ask of a Swiss army knife and but it comes at a price and here I'm not pointing uh, necessarily to, to but non-final properties, right? If you want to add a feature to it, well, be careful because the undesired side effect, um, if I remove a feature, oh, tricky. So we really always learn the right and right use case dedicated uh, with Army knives, which are easier to deploy. Uh, so we have a quicker, well, time packet, uh, open source. That makes sense, you know, and get features faster for users in the community and to customers of of Red Hat. And um, so I guess most of you will know Ellen, the song, uh, you know, when all, all, all you need is a spoon and you got 10,000 knives, or all you need is a knife and you got 10,000 spoons, something like this. You know, we want to we wanna provide pretty much this. Um, so our Swiss Army knives tackle the entire life of a container, which starts with building a container. Right there, we have Builder, um, which is our specific knife, Swiss Army knife, specialized in container building. Um, it's compatible with Docker files, but it provides a way more powerful way of building container images. There's a bunch of really awesome talks by Nalin and also by by Dan. So if you Google, uh, you will you will find some um, talks about build and how to use it. And we can provide functionality because it's not baked into another tool. You know, we can innovate in the specific use cases. Same applies to distributing an image. So once it, you know, we want to ship these this image somewhere, and there we have Scopio. This is the first tool in our family of Swiss army knives, if uh, you want uh, to see it like this. And it, it's super powerful. It, you can change all kinds of compressions. Uh, Dan wrote a great blog that was published a couple of weeks ago about all these different so-called words in the containers image library that Scopio really um, supports super well. It's, Scopio is pretty much a, a smart wrapper around the containers image library. There were a couple of talks and it's been mentioned in many other presentations right here at DEF CONF. Well, there's Potman, it's a drop-in replacement for, for Docker. It's without a doubt the heaviest of our tools. Also because we want to drop in Potman, but we have all the other tools to really specialize and innovate in cases. One orchestrated and the contrast mode where Potman is meant to be used. We got Cryo, and Cryo's only purpose on this planet is to serve the Kubernetes, nothing more, nothing less. This means we, you know, we have this super rock solid, hardened runtime engine for Kubernetes. And this, and all the common building blocks. So the blocks of these tools are two libraries. First, is the container storage, the storage library. Some of the, the name suggests, you know, it's about storage. So there we call for managing containers and containers images on the on the very low levels. We have file system drivers, uh, such as for overlay, butter, as uh, And this talk I'm dedicating to one specific config file in the containers image library, which is responsible for managing container images on a high level these transports and the block that then 
weeks ago already. And it's really super powerful for the standalone. And I'm really impressed and surprised where this library is used. Um, so it's used in way more projects than uh, Potman and its uh, siblings really out at the wild, but also for sysadmins. Namely, there's a couple of config files which are super powerful. This talk is on the directory screen. So while the talk is pretty much just an easier to digest version of the man pages, um, following also the chat a little bit, that know if they isn't well, I can change the uh, audio source, the microphone source. Um, all right, back to the talk. The man is big, um, and I hope that this talk due to digest it uh, a little bit easier. So one thing that we've been presenting in a couple of talks here at DEF CONF as well is pulling by short names. A short name is what we see on the left-hand side. It's a name, an image reference without the registry and without potential uh, or, an, or optional repository. So in this case, you know, you have Fedora. If you do uh, a Potman pull Fedora, it solve to registry Fedora project.org slash Fedora colon and then latest, which is the tag. And um, the registries conf offers a lot of flexibility. So when you do a Docker pull, Docker will always resolve to uh, the Docker hub. Understandably, when Docker was created, it came up with uh, a nice registry and a nice app that is public and that we all use and used. Um, so it, it made sense since there was one registry to always use this one. But it, after some time, you know, more and more public registry occurred. It was Quay. Pretty much every company has their own registry, Red Hat, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, you name it. And also all pretty much all con, uh, all Linux distribution. Soap and Suzu, Debian, they all have their, their registries. So Potman and its sibling projects really didn't want to lock in users into only resolving to one registry. Um, there are use cases, maybe where a company wants to do a Potman pull um, of an image and want to do their own premise registry. So by using the registries conf, you can resolve pretty much any kind of registry. Just as we mentioned before, we really the Fedora project, you know, they, they host their main um, Fedora images on registry fedora project.org. Um, they're also pushed to Docker Hub uh, to, to remain compatible. So you can configure this in the registries.conf file in the so-called unqualified search registries. This is pretty much a list of strings. And when you do a Potman pull, historically, Potman was going through the list in the specified all one by one, it contacted the first registry, tried to pull from it. If it doesn't, if the image couldn't be found, we'll go to the next registry, to the third one, the fourth one, and so on and so forth. Oh, so, but there was, last year we've been notified that there is a security uh, risk by, by doing this. Um, so the Red Hat security team reached out to us and pretty much showed us that if an attacker would take over or take ownership over a repository on one of these registries, um, they might be able to force users into unintentionally pulling an image then can be used as an, as an attack. Um, so in any case, pulling by short name is not the most secure one. Uh, when it comes to security, I always send users to fully qualified image reference and use a digest because this is then Potman has dance and all the other tools have chance to really um, match if digests and the checksums are are matching. We improved that with 3.0. Uh, we have an improved way of resolving the short name. So instead of more or less silently trying to pull these images in the background from the uh, unqualified search register. Builder well, will now a prompt if Potman and Bill have access to a TTY. So they're running in the terminal. In this case, the user has to make an 
intentional choice, right? The we make it explicit by where the image image is going to pull from. Um, and once you make this choice and the pull has been successful, pot will record a pair of short name and the full image reference as an alias. Aliases are in uh, the registers. So then you can configure your own aliases. You can store them for, or they will be stored. And you record a prompt. And also we're shipping in Fedora and CentOS and in RHEL and other distributions to it as well. So find the link on GitHub that contains short names. So this is a community-wide project where we other Linux distributions and companies create a full set of these aliases where the individual projects and distributions and companies, the software vendors, can make the choice and choose where they want to provide their default images. So CentOS, you know, OpenSUSE, Red Hat, uh, SUSE, Oracle, Debian, everything is there. If you have a project and you want a short name, please reach out, open a pull request, or check an issue, and we'll do it. Well, so now in the talk, I go through a couple of, uh, of config knobs that I think you should know and things that I use every day. And actually, when preparing a demo for a talk that Dan and I gave earlier today, exactly this, because for the demo, we had a local container registry running for testing. And since I'm a container developer, you know, I, I need to check stuff all the time. And as you might have noticed, my bandwidth here is very limited. So I appreciate having a cache of images uh, by means of a local registry. However, I, I'm lazy, right? Uh, humans by nature are lazy. I am no exception to that. So I don't want to, you know, make the registry secure. You know, create the certificates. Um, so that TLS verification works. So by default, TLS verification happens all the time for each connection to a registry. So we have to opt out uh, out from that. And this is a very very nice way to just opt out from that without redundantly writing it on the on the command line. You just uh, configure the registry, mark it as insecure, and you're done. So for the, the syntax junkies, they may have already noticed that registry of conf here is in the TOML format. And in the double brackets, they um, indicate that this is a table. So you can have a table of multiple registry objects. And so you can define pretty much any registry you want by location. This is pretty much the address of the registry. And then there's a couple of more attributes that we will go through step by step. So if you want to block a registry, there's another field for it, which is called blocked. However, um, you can also, or to meet more use cases, maybe you just want to block just a specific namespace, or also called or referred to as a repository, or maybe even a specific image comes a new field into play, which is the prefix. When detecting a registry, the image library goes or looks up the registries con and tries to find if there is a registry configured that matches the registry that we're about to contact. And if there's no prefix specified, the location will be as a prefix. But you can override this as shown here, is this specific registry object will only be contacted if you pull from registry.example.org slash repository, the image below, but it will not be selected if you pull or contact another repository on it. So this gives a lot of flexibility to what you want to do. In this case, a namespace or repository, or as shown here, if you want to block a specific image, you can do this. Here comes, I think, mirroring registries is one of the oldest feature requests in, um, the, in, in the containers domain. So uh, a mirror, well, pretty much like any, any other mirror, 
it's a server that will be contacted prior to the main source. So you can do this in RetroScript as well. As shown here as an example, you can specify multiple mirrors, you can set them as insecure, and Portman and its sibling projects will go through the list of mirrors in the specified order and only ref only use the main source, the main registry location as the last resort. Full wins. Um, so this offers a lot of flexibility and is super powerful, especially in air depth environments, which is used a lot. Talk about uh, the remapping of references. So um, this is similar to Yammer, but more powerful. So you is prefix to Docker.io and the location is mirror.gcr.io. This is a specific example that we um, deployed in the of Podman and the other projects back in November last year. What happened there is that Docker Hub came up or established a rate limit. So um, I think you pull up to images per six hours. If you lock in, I think it's 600. If you want more, you got to pay for it. Um, this is absolutely legit understandable why Docker Hub is doing it, but it also caused a lot of issues, not only for, for the entire world, because Docker is used extensively, especially in CI systems. And so many CI systems went south, they went red, people were somehow faced with a choice, either you to another registry, maybe Quayo or use a mirror, um, or to pay. And well, in any case, it you, you got to make a choice. What we did was simply to use prefix remapping in we can configure in the registries. So it was a super fast option for it. And um, this also was a core motivation to, to give this because the registries conf. While many users know really what's going on there, these specific attributes and feature of it are, are not that widely known. So what happens is any reference from .io will be repaired to .gcr.io, not hitting or you're not subject to rate load. And, and trans we didn't have to, to um, you know, substitute image references in our CI. This work by the two things that I want to highlight. Tom Sweeney and our team, they actually did work. They, you know, they, um, they also wrote a, a really blog post on it that is referenced uh, below. And, I do not want to leave unmentioned here is sync. Scopio sync is a cool way to mass migrate images from three to another, or in sysadmin and environment uh, where you can't access the outside network, the internet. Scopio sync, copy all the images you want from the outside world. You go into your data center, plug it in, and you sync also to uh, your internal registry. So there, if you click on the link, this is a, a link on the upstream to the upstream. It's, it's you can uh, as a simple C phase. Um, also YAML, uh, it can eat YAML files if you want to relate it. If you have, you know. Depending on the workflow that, that suits your needs, try fantastic. And especially for such things where from one industry to another, this is really excellent. Also, one thing that is used in OpenShift a lot um, is the registries conf D directory. So if you're familiar with uh, Linux, if you're a sysadmin, you know. These .d directories are conventionally used for drop-in config files. And we support that as well for the registries conf, both for root, 
you know, system-wide um, configuration files, but you can also use it uh, for your rootless user. So if you're on a big grid or, you know, uh, in a environment, you want to um, come up with your own configs, no problem. Just place them in your home directory and .config containers and you're done. So what happens here is that every .conf suffix file in the directory will be loaded in alpha numerical order. And on here, you have 000-shortnamesconf. This is where we store and ship the default list of aliases. So if you want to override an alias, just drop another config file. This is awesome if you're using Ansible or Salt or other config management systems, or, or you, can, you can go old school and just SCP if, if, if that's what you want to do. So they will be, this is a very, very powerful way to add new registry settings, to override aliases, to um, override the unqualified search registries list. So it gives you a lot of flexibility the details are written down in the man page. So this is meant as uh, a pointer to it. And I find it incredibly powerful. So the takeaway messages from, from this um, talk is the registry conf in my opinion, the holy grail of managing container registries. It's feature it. We've been talking about flexible short name. You know, we can mark registries as insecure. Um, we can block registries, repositories, images. We have a smart way of remapping references and also the, the huge flexibility of using mirrors without locking in the users. And if you want to get into the details, uh, somehow I was, I was lucky because I wrote a blog post that was just published four, four days earlier on Red Hat Enable Sysadmin. So you can go there and read about everything I just told you in detail. If you have questions, I saw a lot of traffic in chat, so I guess Dan has answered everything already. Thank you, Valentin. Uh, we have a few minutes for the... Uh, there are three of them, uh, so if you want, I can read them, uh, because they're in the yeah, Q&A section. Mm -hmm. So, question from Paulina Kubiak. Have you ever had any experience by, uh, with using Docker with L? Uh, EL key, okay, stack and using metric beats uh, to obtain data about containers? No, I, I don't even know what EL key is, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I have no idea what EL key is. Thank you. So maybe Paulina can write in, so, in the chat so in the meanwhile. Search, uh, uh, Kibana, Fluandi, Elasticsearch. Oh. Stack for monitor, yeah. All right. No, I, I do not have any experience with that. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Moes, for helping. Uh, other Thank question. You. As you said, the prompt for the long name is only shown when using TTY. What happens if Podman is used in a non-interactive context? This is an excellent question. Uh, thanks for asking. So um, there's, there's a couple of modes that we have. For now, when you upgrade to Portman in Fedora 33, nothing will change. So if, if you're in a non-interactive mode, if you do automated builds, if you run Portman systemd in your automated environment, um, Portman will fall back to the previous mode where it will go through the list of unqualified search registries. First successful pull will win. For Fedora 34, we are planning to the enforcing mode, where in this case, Potman will just use to pull. If there's no recorded short name and, or if there's no match alias for the short name you want to pull, and you're not in an interactive session, then Potman will throw an error exactly with this reason and say, sorry, I can't pull enforcing mode, I reject it. So to play nice and gradually, gradually really make it, make it more secure. Valentin. Uh, so Paulina has added, I meant elastic search plus log dash plus Kibana for L, uh, L, L, Q. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Paulina. Um, but no, I, I do not have any experience with that. Mm -hmm. 
So we have last question from Honza Horak. Uh, any tips how to edit the registry config files via command line? Uh, my set commands are disaster and uh, needed to be uh, adopted to a new format uh, a few times already. <laughs> um, that, that's a funny one. Uh, well, I, I edit it with, with VI. It's a Tomo config. Um, so I, I would guess that there's um, some tool for JSON for Tomo as well. But I usually just use my, my editor of choice and go with that. Um, since it's Tomo, uh, you know, you have bindings for all kinds of Python, um, Ansible, uh, Go, and all languages. So you can also do it programmatically. But from the command, um, I <coughs> I usually just use my editor of choice. But as Dan mentioned here, you can use drop-in config files to write existing keys. And this is also something that that actually should be the, the default recommendation. If you want to edit something, just create a new config and throw it in the in the files. Because if the default one from uh, the distribution may change, then you will benefit from updates there as well. Thank you, Valentin. So let's get to the last question from Antonio. Any thoughts of Docker Hub or Kauai.io uh, so, uh, support for OCI? So we could push, push Helm, Helm charts there. Yeah. Great question. Um, I think both registry support um, OCI and Helm charts are OCI artifacts already. Um, actually, just yesterday, I was pushing an OCI artifact um, to Quay.io, and the Quay team uh, is already, or Quay is already supporting Helm charts. I assume. Docker Hub as well. There were some issues of Docker Hub and OCI images last year uh, where images were not displayed properly, but they were supported. So although when you were on the website, um, the image, although the image displayed, you could still pull it and also override it. So I think both registries uh, support that already. I can be for sure, or I know for sure that Quayao does for Docker Hub. I would be surprised if they don't. 